General George Washington, the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolution, not only led the troops but also played a crucial role as the country's top spymaster, overseeing the creation of successful spy networks to gather intelligence on the enemy. During the American Revolution, George Washington not only served as the country's chief general but also as its chief spymaster, recognizing the importance of gathering intelligence on the British, particularly their activities in New York City. General George Washington, frustrated with the amateurish intelligence gathering efforts, realized that civilians would make better spies than soldiers and personally oversaw the establishment of America's first reliable intelligence pipeline in enemy territory exchanging invisible ink letters and giving detailed instructions to the spies, which ultimately contributed greatly to America's victory. Abner Doubleday, a career U.S. Army officer, played a pivotal role in the Battle of Gettysburg and secured a patent on the San Francisco Cable Car Railway, but despite the myth, he did not invent baseball. However, his significant national impact cannot be denied. In 1861, Abner Doubleday fired the first shot in defense of the Union at Fort Sumter, and went on to command his own division in the Army of the Potomac during key battles such as Bull Run, Antietam, and Gettysburg. General Abner Doubleday stepped in as commander after General John F. Reynolds was killed, leading his men to fight off a larger Confederate force for five hours, buying enough time for the rest of the Union Army to arrive and secure the high ground at Gettysburg. Because of General Abner Doubleday's bravery and determination at Gettysburg, the Confederates were prevented from securing the heights south of the battlefield, but instead of being praised, Doubleday was unjustly penalized by General George Meade. With a daring amphibious landing at Incheon, General Douglas MacArthur outflanked the North Koreans and turned the tide of the seemingly lost Korean War, leading to their collapse and a panicked retreat. As General Douglas MacArthur's forces approached the Chinese border, he disregarded warnings of China's potential intervention, only to be caught off guard when the Chinese poured across the Yalu River, resulting in the loss of his gains and the retreat of American forces from North Korea. General Douglas MacArthur, in a fit of humiliation after retreating down the Korean Peninsula, proposed dropping 50 atomic bombs on China to create a radioactive barrier and seal off the Korean Peninsula, but President Truman, skeptical of MacArthur's confident assurances, refused to go along with the plan and ultimately fired him. George S. Patton, America's most renowned World War II general, was a man of contradictions, with a hard-charging, obnoxious personality, a softer side for writing poetry, and a crazy belief in his eternal soldier status, which fueled extreme reactions of love or hate towards him. However, his controversial actions, like slapping sick soldiers and causing casualties due to nepotism, marred his wartime exploits and almost ended his career. General Patton's abuse of power led to a disastrous mission, resulting in the deaths, injuries, and capture of hundreds of soldiers, all for the personal reason of liberating his son-in-law, who was never in any danger. During the autumn of 1862, the federal government and the unions cause hit rock bottom, facing defeats, mistakes, and the looming threat of foreign recognition of Confederate independence. However, a stroke of luck came in the form of Union Army Corporal Barton Mitchell finding General Robert E. Lee's Special Orders No. 191, revealing the enemy's movements. General George B. McClellan received Special Orders No. 191, revealing a fortunate opportunity to defeat Robert E. Lee's army, but unfortunately, McClellan's inability to seize the moment allowed Lee to regroup and resulted in the bloodiest day in American history at the Battle of Antietam. During the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, the Joint Chiefs of Staff urged President Kennedy to invade Cuba to remove Soviet nuclear missiles, presenting him with plans for a full invasion or aerial strikes, with Air Force General Curtis LeMay favoring the full invasion due to uncertainties about the effectiveness of airstrikes and the potential firing of missiles at the U.S. In the midst of the Cuban Missile Crisis, with tactical nukes scattered throughout Cuba, 
the pressure on lower-ranking officers to use these weapons was immense, potentially risking a full-blown nuclear exchange that could have devastated both countries and set humanity back centuries. Thankfully, President Kennedy's resistance to the pressure from his generals, like General Curtis LeMay, and his reliance on diplomacy and blockade successfully defused the crisis without triggering World War III. Under the command of British General Isaac Brock, a force of 1330 men, including Redcoats, Canadian militia, and Native Americans, attacked Fort Detroit during the War of 1812, despite being outnumbered by the American garrison commanded by General William Hull. General Brock managed to deceive the Americans into thinking he had more troops by dressing his Canadian militia in British uniforms and having them march in a loop, while also creating the illusion of greater strength by lighting five times as many fires at night. General Brock's relentless psychological pressure on General Hull forced him to surrender his entire command, resulting in a military disaster for the US and derailing their plans to invade Canada early in the war. This surrender not only reinvigorated the Canadians, but also fueled the Native Americans in the Northwest Territory to wage war against U.S. outposts and settlers. Despite his capture, General Hull's life was spared due to his past heroism during the American War of Independence. In 1862, Union General George B. McClellan aimed to capture Richmond, but General John B. Magruder's theatrical tactics successfully deceived McClellan into thinking he faced a much stronger Confederate force at Yorktown. General Magruder used elaborate tactics to deceive General McClellan into thinking that the Confederate positions along the Warwick River were heavily fortified and strongly garrisoned, even though Magruder lacked the manpower to actually defend them. Through the use of drum rolls, cheering, and repetitive marching, Magruder successfully convinced McClellan that a frontal attack would be too risky. General George B. McClellan missed the opportunity to seize Richmond and win the Civil War in 1862 due to his timidity, as he ordered a halt and conducted a siege instead of simply pushing through and capturing the city. Once a brilliant general in America's cause, Benedict Arnold's resentment and financial distress led him to become the United States' most infamous traitor, but not before he had provided valuable service to the American side and exhibited remarkable leadership in the capture of Fort Ticonderoga and the construction of a fleet to defeat a superior British fleet. Benedict Arnold, despite his initial success and promotion, became embittered by slights and financial troubles, ultimately betraying the American cause by offering his services to the British and attempting to sell plans of fortifications at West Point. John Sedgwick, a respected Union general and corps commander in the Civil War, is unfortunately more remembered for his ironic last words than for his stellar record and the love he earned from his soldiers. During the Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse, General Sedgwick scolded his troops for flinching under sniper fire, jokingly stating that, they couldn't hit an elephant at this dista, only to be fatally shot in the face by a sniper bullet. In the midst of a series of defeats, General George Washington devised a daring plan to boost morale and turn the tide of the American Revolution, a surprise attack on Hessian forces in Trenton, New Jersey, by crossing the frozen Delaware River. During the treacherous crossing of the Delaware, George Washington, known for his detached dignity, surprised his troops by cracking a joke at the expense of his overweight artillery chief, Henry Knox, which eventually lifted their spirits and led to a successful attack on the enemy in Trenton. During the Revolutionary War, George Washington's love for dogs led him to call a surprising ceasefire, just to return a lost dog to its owner, who happened to be an enemy general. George Washington, a great leader but only a mediocre general, lost more battles than he won, although he did secure victory in the crucial siege of Yorktown, where a British army surrendered. One of his defeats, the Battle of Germantown, saw an unexpected addition to the retreating American forces, Sir William Howe's well-kept terrier, who Washington decided to return rather than keep as a taunt. Despite the ongoing war, George Washington showed his honorable nature by returning Sir William Howe's dog, 
leaving a lasting impression on the British commander and affecting his enthusiasm for the conflict.